Welcome back to yet another Bootstrap Sidebar tutorial. In this tutorial, we will create a sidebar using Bootstrap 5. This sidebar has toggle functionality, which hides and shows the sidebar when the user clicks a button. The sidebar is fully responsive, and we will guide you through the step-by-step -step process of creating it. So without further ado, let's start this project by setting the initials. Let's start by setting the title. Then we'll create a style.css file in the root directory and link it in the head tag of the index.html file. Similarly, we'll create a script.js file in the same directory and include it in the index.html file before the closing body tag. For using Bootstrap, we'll link its CDN for easy access. We'll copy and paste the bootstrap.main.css CDN link under the head tag and similarly, we'll paste the bootstrap.bundle.main.js CDN link in the index.html file. Now that we have completed the initial setup, we will move on to the HTML section. First, we will create a div with the bootstrap class dflex which sets the element property to display as flex. Next, to create the sidebar component, we will use the HTML aside tag with an ID of sidebar. To represent the logo, we will use a div with the class sidebar logo. Within this div, we will place an anchor tag that will serve as the logo for our project. Following this, we will set up the navigation for our sidebar. Our navigation will be wrapped within a UL tag with the class sidebar nav. We will set its padding to zero using a bootstrap class. To represent the navigation header, we will create an LI tag with the class sidebar header. Then, to create sidebar navigation items, we will use li tags with the class sidebar item. Within these li tags, we will create anchor tags with the class sidebar link to represent the sidebar links. Our sidebar links will also have icons to represent them. We will be using line icons for the icons which are easy to use and offer many free options. To implement line icons into our project, we will include its cd and link within the head tag in the index.html file. To create the icon, we will select a suitable icon and paste it under the anchor tag. Additionally, within the anchor tag, there will be a span tag representing the navigation link. To create additional navigation links, we can simply copy and paste the existing ones, making some changes to the icons and links. We will also create another sidebar header by giving the li tag a class of sidebar header. Now that you understand how to create simple navigation links, let's discuss how to create a navigation link with a dropdown. For this, we will create an li element with the class sidebar item. Within this li element, we will place an anchor tag with the class sidebar link. To create the dropdown, we will use the bootstrap accordion. We will simply copy the bootstrap accordion data attribute and accessibility and use them with our anchor tag. After setting up the accordion, we need to add the collapsed class to the anchor link, a bootstrap class that initially hides the dropdown menu. Additionally, we should add the class name has dropped down to it. Now we will update the data BS target attribute to auth. This specifies which element should be shown or hidden. Likewise, we will set area controls to auth. This attribute is used for accessibility purposes. Similarly, for the navigation link, we will use an icon from line icons, along with a span tag representing the navigation link. To create a drop-down link, after closing the anchor tag within the li tag, we need to create another ul tag with the id auth. Additionally, we should give it the classes sidebar dropdown, bootstrap list unstyled to remove default styling, and add the class collapse to initially hide the dropdown. We also need to specify the data bs parent attribute, which should be set to the id of sidebar. Finally, we can add a navigation item by using a list item with the class sidebar item. 
Similarly, we will also add an anchor tag with the class sidebar link. For the next navigation item, we can simply copy and paste what we have created. After successfully creating a navigation link with the drop down, the next step is to expand the sidebar navigation by adding two more links. To do this, we can simply copy and paste the existing code and then make the necessary adjustments by modifying the line icon and navigation link accordingly. After creating the sidebar navigation links, we also need to add a footer for the sidebar. Following the closure of the UL tag, we will add a div element with the class sidebar footer. Inside this div, we will place an anchor tag with the class sidebar link. Similarly, we will include the representational icon and a span tag to represent the navigation link. Once the sidebar component is complete, we'll move on to the main section, also known as the main dashboard section. We will create a div with the class main for our dashboard navbar. We will use the bootstrap navbar component and give it a bottom border. Within the nav component, we will add a button with the class toggler btn. This button will toggle our sidebar. We'll also place a suitable icon inside this button for toggling the sidebar. After closing the nav tag, we will create a main element with a bootstrap class that provides padding of one rem on all sides. Similarly, we will have a div with the class container fluid. Inside this div element, we will include another div with a bootstrap class that provides a margin bottom of one rem and the text center class. Then we will include an h1 tag to represent the title for the dashboard. After completing the HTML structure, we will now move on to CSS. Firstly, for the fonts, we will be using Google Fonts, which offers a wide range of font options. For this project, we will choose the Poppins font. We'll copy its embedded code and paste it inside our style.css file. Next, we will target the body element and give it a font family of poppins. Similarly, we will target the li tag, remove the default list style by setting it to none, and then target the anchor tag to remove its default underline using text decoration none. We will then target the element with the class main. To start, we will set its min height to 100 vh to make sure it takes up at least 100% of the viewport height and its width to 100% to occupy the full width. We will set overflow to hidden to clip the element if the content exceeds its size and give it a light shade of background. Next we will target the aside element with the class sidebar. We will give it a max width of 264px so that it won't expand beyond this width and a min width of 264px so it won't shrink below this width. We will also set the transition for smooth animation effects when the sidebar is toggled. Additionally, we'll give it a background color of black, set its display to flex and its flex direction property to column which stacks child elements vertically. Now that the basic design for the sidebar is ready, we will proceed to JavaScript for the sidebar toggle functionality. First, we will create a constant variable named toggler. Then, using the document.querySelector method, we will select the button element with the class toggler btn and assign it to the toggler variable. We will add an event listener to the toggler variable to trigger a function when the user clicks the toggle button. Within this function, using the document.querySelector method, we will select the element with the ID sidebar and use the JavaScript toggle method to add or remove the collapsed class. Here we can see the collapsed class being toggled when we click a button. In CSS, we will apply styles when the element with the ID sidebar has the collapsed class appended. We will give a margin left of 264px to completely hide the sidebar. Next, we will style our toggle button. We will set its background color to transparent 
cursor type to pointer and border on all sides to zero. We will then style the icon within the toggle button. Its size will be 1.5 rem, color will be black and font weight will be bold. The element with the class navbar will have padding of 1.15 rem on the top and bottom and 1.5 rem on the left and right. The UL element with the class sidebar nav will have flex set to 1 1 auto to allow it to adjust its size dynamically based on the available space. The element with the class sidebar logo will have padding of 1.15 rem on the top and bottom and 1.5 rem on the left and right. Likewise, we will align its text to the center. The link within the sidebar logo class will have a color of white, a font weight of 800, and a font size of 1.25 rem. The header for our navigation link will have a color of white and a font size of 0.75 rem. Similarly, padding for the top will be 1.5 rem, 1.5 rem on the right and left, and 0.375 rem at the bottom. The navigation link of the sidebar will have padding of 0.625 rem on the top and bottom, and 1.625 rem on the left and right. The color will be set to white. Its position to relative. We will also set up a transition for a smooth hover effect and its display to block. When the user hovers over the link, we will simply change its background color to light gray with partial transparency. Now that we have styled our sidebar and navigation links, it's time to create a drop down icon. We will target the data BS toggle attribute for the link that has a drop down. These CSSS rules will target the pseudo element after the link, where we will create the drop down icon when the drop down menu is visible. First, we will specify the border property as solid. Then, we will specify different border widths for the sides to form a triangle pointing leftwards. The content property will be set to empty. The display property will be set to inline block and padding on all sides will be 2px. The position will be set to absolute and the element will be positioned 1.5 rem from the right and 1.4 rem from the top of its container. Additionally, we will use the transform property to rotate the element by minus 135 deg, making it point diagonally left. We will also set the transition for smooth animation when the style changes. Now we also need to create a drop down icon for the collapsed state. To do this, we will simply add the collapsed class to the pseudo element. First, we will use the transform property to rotate the icon 45 degrees to point the cursor downward. Similarly, we will add a transition for smooth animation. Now we are almost at the end of this tutorial with only the responsive part left. To target mobile devices we will use CSS breakpoints. When the screen size is less than 768 pixels, the sidebar will be initially hidden. To achieve this we will add the sidebar toggle class to the aside element. In the CSS we will target this class and give it a margin left of minus 264 pixels to make it hidden. For mobile devices, the margin left property will only be set to 0 pixels when the user clicks on the toggle button. Finally, we have come to the end of this tutorial where we created a sidebar using Bootstrap. I hope you learned something from this video. Until next time, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more content like this.